In 50 minutes, the late film is a wartime story, Hornet's Nest, stirred up by Rock Hudson and Selva Koshina. Now, to end BBC One's week celebrating 60 BBC years, Ned Sherrin introduces the pioneering television satire show he created two decades ago in That Was 20 Years Ago, That Was. Behind this handsome nationwide set is a real television studio. Just over 20 years ago, we did a pilot, a practice show for a new programme against these bare studio walls. When the series went on the air, the walls were still bare, and the show was live and topical, and it was broadcast late every Saturday night. It lasted about an hour. It was called That Was The Week That Was. Many of you will not remember the program. Many of you will not remember the 1960s. Muhammad Ali was still Cassius Clay. You could go out any night with five pounds in your pocket, bribe two metropolitan policemen, and still have change. A man in jeans was very likely a plumber. Time and nostalgia have given TW3 the reputation of being shocking and revolutionary. You're unlikely to be shocked or revolted tonight. Time plays other tricks. Old memories grow rosy, old outrages appear inoffensive. In any case, shock, horror and scandal were never the great virtues of TW3. Rather listen for the quality of the writing and the attitude to events and issues. If there was ever a writer's show, this was it. Abetted and enhanced by an extraordinarily brave and talented cast who never picked up their scripts before Friday. Everything changes and everything is the same. Today we have an alliance party. In 1962 there was a liberal revival at Orpington. India invaded Goa. And Portugal, lacking a woman prime minister, did not send a task force. Traffic jams and unemployment were up. Nurses' pay was not. April Ashley, whose autobiography came out this year, was becoming famous as the first Englishman to go abroad and come back abroad. The BBC was not 60, it was 40, but by God they were celebrating it with the same fervour. It's not for us to say whether we had the influence on television or on events with which some people have credited that was the week. What is certain is that there was a great communion between public and programme makers on Saturday nights. Two footnotes. At the end of the programme, you'll hear David Frost refer to Hugh Gateskill's health. Gateskill was on a routine hospital visit, and the news was that he was on the mend. Tragically, he died a few days later, but the programme was a live conversation with its audience, so we haven't cut the joke which left us with egg on our face. Second, you will recognise and enjoy most of the performers. One, the very talented and dearly loved cartoonist Timothy Birdsell died very young in the middle of the series of which he relished being a part. Twenty years on, he's still missed and treasured, so perhaps the rest of us who made these odd, scrappy, pertinent, petulant, ultimately serious and, we hoped, funny programmes, and the BBC, who after all gave us house room and support, perhaps we might dedicate this repeat of one episode, a review of the year 1962, to Tim's memory. This is BBC Television. <laughs> This is the point uh, where we part company for the night. It's also the end of BBC One's week celebrating 60 BBC years. So we'll round it off the way the television service used to close in the 50s with the final strains of the television march by Eric Coates. Have a very pleasant weekend. And from us at the BBC Television Centre, good night for now. <laughs>